everyone. My name is Preeti and this is my second video Hyperledger Fabric Basics in the series titled Implementing Blockchain Using Hyperledger Fabric. One fine morning you wake up with a brilliant idea and get all excited about implementing it using blockchain. So you google up how to start building your application but are overwhelmed with so many different platforms available in the market. So what do you do? You briefly go through them all Make a list of features in each platform and do a comparative analysis to find the best fit for your idea. Well, this is what I also did. There are tons of tutorials and blogs on Ethereum, so naturally I was drawn towards it. But then a friend of mine strongly suggested Hyperledger Fabric and after doing a lot of comparison, I finally concluded that, yep, Hyperledger Fabric is for me. Let me take you through some of the important features of Fabric and contrast them with Ethereum and then you can make your educated choice on which platform you would rather build your brilliant blockchain idea on. Right? So, Ethereum is a permissionless blockchain technology where as I described in my previous video, it just means that anyone in the world can participate anonymously. The type of network, that is whether it is permissioned or permissionless, makes a huge difference on how consensus is reached. The permissionless blockchain model has inferior performance and scalability as compared to permission model. Hyperledger Fabric is permissioned private blockchain. In this model, the participants are vetted and this provides a higher transaction throughput performance. Hence, fourth, we will be just calling this Fabric. The major features that differentiate Fabric from other permissionless blockchain models like Ethereum are Firstly, Fabric is established under Linux Foundation. Thus, it is governed by developers from multiple organizations, which of course leads to more innovation and rapid development. Secondly, Fabric doesn't restrict its developers to domain-specific language. So, by any chance, do you know Node.js or Java or Go? Of course you do. So, get going. Start writing the smart contract for your brilliant idea. You don't need to learn any new language with Fabric. Next up, Fabric is specially designed to have a modular architecture. It is very flexible and easy to use because all the components are pluggable. This platform has been design, designed to be configurable in order to meet the needs of diverse users. Fabric can be configured in multiple ways to support the diverse solution requirement. Also, Fabric is permissioned blockchain, so it has higher performance and scalability. And continuous efforts are in place to improve the performance with every new release. You can actually go through the Hyperledger Fabric documentation that I've mentioned in the link below and understand the architecture and the features of Fabric. Also, this link has got great set of examples and tutorials to get you going. But personally, I believe in understanding the basic concepts and architecture before diving into the example. So let's first understand some of the terminologies used in Hyperledger Fabric. Block. Block is a set of order transaction. Typically, a block consists of block header, metadata, and a series of order transaction. So a set of transactions are stacked together and updated in the ledger in batches. Each block is cryptographically linked to preceding blocks. Next, Genesis block. It is nothing but the first block in the chain kind of like a dummy block or can even contain the channel's initial configuration. So once you have set up your network, you actually need to create a Genesis block to, uh, you know, start having those transactions proceed because with the Genesis block, the other newer blocks will keep on add adding up and then you have your blockchain ready, right? Channel. It is a private subnet of communication between multiple network members. Channel ensures data isolation and confidentiality. Peer. It is a network entity that participates in transaction. Each peer maintains a valid copy of ledger at all times and also has a chain code installed on them. So any client wanting to execute a transaction has to co first connect to a peer. Ledger. As we discussed in the previous video, blockchains are immutable and ledgers make it happen, right? The ledger comprises of two parts, 
the interconnected blocks containing all the transaction that has transpired since the inception of this blockchain channel and a world state. We'll talk about world state in a jiffy. Next, the chain code or the smart contract is a code you as a blockchain developer will be writing. The chain code is invoked by the client applications and is installed on each peer. Chain code is basically the business logic governing your blockchain implementation. World state or current state is part of the ledger and as the name suggests, represents the latest values for all the keys stored in the transaction log. The benefit of maintaining a world state in fabric as opposed to other blockchain models is that the chain code, that is our business logic, can directly access the latest values, latest valid values without having to calculate them from the transaction log every single time. This has huge impact on the performance. Consensus. Consensus is an agreement between all the participating peers on the validity and order of a transaction in blockchain. It is used to validate if a particular transaction can be appended to the block in the blockchain. Right? Endorsement. Well, the fabric uh, blockchain model relies on endorsement to get the consensus from uh, for any transaction. Endorsement is the process of executing a chain code and returning a proposal response to the client. We as developer can define the endorsement policy in our network, whether every transaction must be endorsed by one or two or all the peers on the network to be marked as valid. Orderer is a node responsible for running the communication service and guarantees the delivery of any, of any message, block or transaction over the network. So you can think of it as a node, a peer, which is responsible for guaranteeing that if another peer transfers uh, or transmits a data or broadcasts any message, then it is it, it reaches all the other nodes in the network, right? So the orderer basically might not always have the uh, transaction ledger. Instead, orderer has a different kind of ledger that is the orderer ledger, which we'll discuss in the future tutorials. So in the next video, I'll be discussing about the fabric architecture and how we can start building our first fabric application. See you next time.